Although it might seem strange to say, I've loved Futurama since I was a child. Before I understood most of the jokes or scientific references, I was still watching it with my dad every time it came on. I'd beg my parents to let me stay up to catch it at night, and I distinctly remember feeling very strange seeing the scene with Kif giving birth to babies without my parents around one night. Anyway, although I've rarely spoken about adult animation online so far, and this video took me weeks to finally finish due to the sheer intimidation of discussing such a beloved and well-regarded series, Matt Groening's work was a huge part of my childhood, with The Simpsons always being on the TV during dinner time, laughing at Bender with my dad, and secretly shipping Fry and Leela. It remained dear to me throughout high school, and my love for Futurama has taken a backseat to other shows in recent years, but I've never forgotten how awesome Awesome, the very first episode is. And that's what we're going to talk about today. Welcome to a new series on my channel called Perfect Pilots. If you missed the first installment about Scrubs, maybe go check that one out. In this series, we'll be looking back on some of the best first episodes of television ever made, some series that are household names, and some that flew under the radar, and breaking down what makes them so great. How do we define a perfect pilot? Here are the parameters I'm going with. A perfect pilot familiarizes the viewer with its characters and their environment. It sets up the relationships between the characters. It gives the viewer an accurate preview of the philosophy of the series. It sets the stakes and demonstrates the tone of the series. Dramatic, comedic, mysterious, etc. And it hooks you in. It makes you want to keep watching. I'm not a TV writer, but I have aspirations of making my own animated series someday. And alongside serving as entertainment for you, I hope these videos will serve as a study for me of how to do this thing right and what can be learned from some of TV's best. Futurama premiered in March 1999 on Fox. It was created by Matt Groening while he was working on The Simpsons, and he developed it with David X. Cohen. The series originally aired until 2003 on Fox, and then it moved to Comedy Central, where it wrapped in 2013. To fans' surprise, an eighth season was ordered by Hulu in 2022, set to premiere later this year. Futurama is an animated science fiction sitcom starring Philip J. Fry, a sweethearted slacker who accidentally falls into a cryosleep tank while making a pizza delivery and wakes up on New Year's Eve 29.99. In this new present, he finds work as a courier alongside government job deserter Leela and the robot Bender. While a strong percentage of episodes usually are about wacky sitcom hijinks starring the crew in some formation, the show also explores the background of each of the characters and is known for its extreme degree of planning ahead, hilarious dialogue, and massive heart. I also personally have always loved the art with its retro futuristic slant, great handling of movement, and adorable character designs. It's generally regarded as one of the best and most legendary animated series ever created. So there's your intro, in case you've somehow never seen it. If you like Rick and Morty, Final Space, or any other sci-fi adult animated cartoon out there, you probably have this show to thank for its influence. <laughs> Futurama's pilot is called Space Pilot 3000, and I truly think it's one of the best pilots ever made for television. It flawlessly balances comedy and emotionality, it sets up the most important relationships and themes in the series, it has amazing art and animation, and it serves as a perfect preview for what lies ahead over the next seven seasons. Having seen the entire series, it's pretty incredible to go back and watch this pilot now. The episode opens on a gag about what space is like before showing us that Fry is a slacker delivery boy with a failing love life. I hate my life, I hate my life, I hate my life. While running a delivery, Fry realizes he's been pranked, and while toasting to another lousy millennium, he accidentally falls backwards into a cryogenic pod, set to run for a thousand years. And when he awakens, he looks out the window and realizes that everything he knows is gone forever. To our surprise, he cheers. And we go to the theme. Three minutes in, we have an idea of who Fry is, his attitude in life, the experiences that set him up for willing detachment from his old reality, the sci-fi slant that permeates this world, and the humor that the viewer will only adore more with time. In the future, life will be precious. Please select mode of death, quick and painless, or slow and horrible. Yeah, I'd like to place a collect call. You have selected slow and horrible. Good choice. From the creator of The Simpsons. Bring it on, baby. Ah! Comes Futurama. Kill me already. 
By the way, my name's Bender. Series premiere Sunday, March 28th on Fox. You are now dead. On an all-new Futurama. So, where are we going anyway? Nowhere special. The moon. Wow! I'm gonna be a famous hero, just like Neil Armstrong and those other brave guys no one ever heard of. Can I do the countdown? Knock yourself out. Ten. Nine. Okay, we're here. <laughs> How about we go look for the original moon landing site? It's been lost for centuries. Well, I'm feeling lucky. <laughs> Ooh. Ooh. Uh, I'm ready to go back now. Fry meets Bender when he accidentally gets in line for what he thinks is a phone booth, where Bender is waiting to, uh, induce the ceasing of his functioning. He's sardonic, vulgar, and believes that his only purpose is that which he is designed for, which is to bend metal to extremely specific angles. Metal used for building those special phone booths. The first thing Bender says is, Bite my shiny metal ass. A catchphrase we'd hear time and time again. The entire scene is darkly funny in the way that it leaves you incredulous upon your first watch. And for me, my nth watch 22 years later. Given the comedic sidekick role that he usually plays in the series, this is a flawless introduction. Bender's arc in this episode is about having a purpose other than bending, as it's a shock that Fry would want to have a robot for a friend. Instead of ending his existence, he decides to bum around with Fry and see what happens. Bender is a rare mortal robot, meant to be destroyed due to a defect but spared by Hermes. And while he is more often serving the purpose of comedic relief or causing problems for the rest of the gang while dodging the consequences himself, he still has struggles of his own. Most robots do not face the same risk of mortality as their backup units function, whereas Bender's does not. And this makes his experience as a living being more close to that of humans than of his own kind. And the greatest sources of meaningfulness in his life are his friendships with the people that he grows close to on the Planet Express team. Fry and Bender are each other's best friends, living together and going through everything you could possibly imagine, putting on displays of extreme loyalty throughout the series despite the way that they regularly rag on each other, including Fry doing absolutely everything in his power to rescue Bender when he accidentally launches him into the vacuum of space where he meets God. He also becomes God? It's a whole thing. In this episode, Bender experiences that feeling of being needed or wanted by someone for the first time, where Fry extends his friendship to him with no expectations or ulterior motives. You really want a robot for a friend? Yeah, ever since I was six. Fry meets Leela shortly after awakening in the future, as she works as a fate assignment officer at Applied Cryogenics. Leela's characterization upon introduction is no nonsense and threatening, a fitting first impression for a badass woman who tends to be less goofy than other members of the cast. Leela's arc in this episode is really about Fry changing her life. When he meets her, she parrots the same you gotta, you gotta do, do what you gotta, gotta do, do slogan as everyone around her when speaking about their society. Seeing Fry resist the systems in place around them as the episode progresses pushes Leela to finally reject the lifestyle that she hates so much. She removes her career chip, defects from her job, and decides to pilot for Planet Express with Fry. What I love about Fry and Leela's first interaction is that despite his initial shock at her having only one eye, he's not really bothered by her being different at all. He's scared of her because she's trying to put a chip in him, but he doesn't treat her any differently than anyone else, and he even opens up to her about his experiences with isolation on a moment's notice when she challenges him on under understanding her perspective. After being sent to the surface by her mutant family in order for her to have a better life, Leela's childhood was dominated by experiences of being othered, which led her to become comfortable with a solitary life, having walls put up to protect herself sociologically. Throughout her experiences shown in the series, her biggest challenges to me seem to be vulnerability, unraveling her past, and seeking a place where she feels like she belongs, which she finds in the Planet Express team, reuniting with her biological parents, and her relationship with Fry. And in this episode, her arc hints to us the weight that Fry carries in her life for the rest of time. What are you doing? Quitting. Why? Because I've always wanted to. I just never realized it until I met you. Shortly after arriving in the future, Fry discovers that he has one living relative, his very old nephew, Professor Farnsworth. He's demonstrated to be a competent scientist and a total nerd, interested in showing the gang the different lengths of wire that he uses. While he doesn't have a lot of screen time in the first episode, 
episode, Professor is the reason they all get to go on these intergalactic adventures, as they escape from government officials into his intergalactic spaceship. The craze that's sweeping the world is coming! Here's to another lousy millennium. Welcome to the year 3000! Cool, just like in Star Trek. Oh, whoa, a real live robot. From the creator of The Simpsons. Can I ask you a question? As long as it's not about my eye. What's with the eye? I'm unstoppable! This is the series you've been waiting for. All right! Futurama premieres Thursday, 7.30 on 7. We have Simpsons creator Matt Groening for a sneak peek of the new Fox series, Futurama. This is Bender the Robot. Big eyes, square pupils, that's how you can tell he's a robot. It's kind of crude, but you get the idea here. There's the bullet-shaped head. Bender's bad. Don't be like Bender, he's a bad role model. In fact, in general, don't be like any robot. That's my advice. Bender. Bite my shiny metal. Get to know Bender on Futurama tonight after an all-new Simpsons on Fox. Fry reads in the beginning as an anti-chosen one. He accidentally falls into exceptional circumstances, and despite his slackerdom and apparent lack of skills, he changes the lives of everyone he meets. His good nature, honesty, and ease with which he trusts others makes him instantly lovable to the audience and to his new friends. Fry and Leela may very well be the first fictional couple I ever cared about. I've been shipping them for 22 years at this point, and to be honest, I had a massive crush on both of them as a kid. Can you blame me? On their first day of knowing each other, they connect through their shared experience of isolation and loneliness, and even before their relationship actually begins, they escape that loneliness by finding companionship in each other as Leela deserts her job and they begin their adventures with Planet Express. And their relationship throughout the series really is the heart of the whole thing. Despite the seemingly unlikely circumstances leading to them meeting, the two of them are true soulmates destined by time and space, who always end up back in each other's arms regardless of what happens. In fact, Leela's pet Nibbler was the one to push him into the cryogenic tube in the first place, and you can see that in the first episode. That thing I said about Fry not being a chosen one? He actually has a special brain that will save the planet, <laughs> but that's for another time. Fry possesses a purity and goodness that has always made him very precious to me as a character. Although he definitely is naive and immature when the story begins, he grows and changes a million times over. His young life involved feelings of neglect and distance from his parents in competition with his brother. And in his adult life, he ended up in a monotonous job as a delivery boy with his girlfriend leaving him, leading him to feel detached from everything he has just lost in the pilot upon arriving in the future. But throughout his journey in the series, he discovers how his family really felt about his disappearance, getting closure with his mother in a dream, and discovering that his brother named his nephew after him in Fry's honor. I physically cannot talk about his dog Seymour. I made a whole song for Johnny Tuchello's video about Jurassic Park, so go watch that if you want to cry today. Anyway, all of this is to say that all Although Fry has many arcs as a character, obviously he's the main character, the overarching theme of his experiences is finding love, community, and his place in the world through his relationships to other people and their endless adventures together. Wait, actually that's the point of the entire show. And it was the point of Scrubs in the first episode of Perfect Pilots too. Which makes sense to me. Isn't that what we're all searching for? It's no surprise that the best stories ever told are at their core universally relatable. Okay, marking that down as a lesson on what makes a perfect pilot. In terms of art direction, Space Pilot 3000 is gorgeous. The character designs may be simplistic, but they are extremely charming and endearing, and they enable the animator's expert handling of movement and perspective. They do some fantastic camera work that makes the entire experience of watching feel more cinematic, emotional, and real. There are a few moments I want to highlight, like this shot of Fry looking out at the city through the window when he first wakes up, which, by the way, includes this joke in the original animatic. Hey! My bike's gone! And walking through the city for the first time, overwhelmed and amazed by the futuristic landscape and absolute culture shock he has been thrust into. The music in this scene is a perfect match. 
Obviously, if I'm talking about this as a perfect pilot, the writing is amazing, that's what this whole video is about. But I'd like to highlight my favorite joke, which is this understated moment that always makes me laugh. It's December 31st, 2999. My god, a million years. <laughs> The thesis of this episode is this. Who cares what you programmed for? Fry, Leela, and Bender all seem to feel locked into their current life path when we meet them. Fry is working a dead-end job, his girlfriend leaves him for another man, and he hates his life. Leela can't stand her job either, or the you gotta do what you gotta do mantra that surrounds her. Bender hates his line of work so much that he tries to end it all. But all of that changes when Bender and Leela ignore their programming and take a chance on chasing a new purpose. And for Fry, who cares what you're programmed for is flipped in the opposite direction. As he leans into being a delivery boy a thousand years after his old job where he did essentially the same thing at a smaller scale. And the result is a lifetime of epic adventures, one in a million friendship, and the world's greatest love across time and space. It feels basically impossible to include every story beat that this pilot sets up for because of how complicated and varied Futurama's story is. And now there are more episodes coming soon. Bender Leela and Fry have been some of my favorite characters in all of animation since I was a literal child. Their stories are some of the most epic, funny, star-crossed, and legendary tales ever told on television. How could I possibly communicate the gravity of this show, the impact on our culture and its lasting legacy in animation, or even what it means to me personally as one of the first cartoons that I ever loved? Futurama endeared itself to the world with its intelligent humor and efforts to tell stories of love and loss that stretched across all of reality. It took the idea of what adult animation could be and stretched it into something fresh and different. Futurama changed the game, and people all over the world cherish it as one of the best animated series ever made. I invite you in the comments to share your relationship with Futurama and the impact that these amazing characters and stories have had on your life, and I can't wait to read them. Thank you so much for watching this installment of Perfect Pilots. I was a little nervous to cover this one, I'm not gonna lie, it's so intimidating, but I hope I did a good job. Also, if you love Futurama, you've probably seen his videos already, but shout out to my bestie, Johnny Tuchellos, who's basically YouTube's resident expert on this show and nudged me to write this video. I hope I made you proud. That's all I've got for you today, so stay hydrated, take care of yourself, tell your friends you love them, and I'll see you soon, bye. Can I ask you kind of a weird question?